I remember somebody asked me, how does an atheist from the south side of Chicago wind up living in Nashville, Tennessee as a born-again Christian working churches? I was at a church last night in New Albany in, in a Nazarene from, from clubs like this and from Vegas casinos and from Atlantic City. And, and how do you wind up working churches? And uh, I got to tell you, 25 years ago when I started comedy in Chicago, I, this was the, la the last place I expected to ever be is in front of a church and uh, professing a faith in God, certainly. And what happened was I crawled into an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting 17 years ago, and all I wanted to do was stop drinking. That was it. That was my goal in life, was to stop drinking and try to be a civil human being to my family. I was not a nice man. Trust me. Let's just say I was an angry, bitter, jaded, cynical man, just not nice. And I was harder on my family than anybody. I wasn't nice to many of you people, but I was harder on my wife and kids. And they told me to pray to a God, and they said, pray to this God. And I said, I don't believe in God. And they said, well, find something in this universe that's bigger than you. And I got to tell you, as broken as I was and beat up as I was, that was the hardest thing I had to do was find something larger than me in the universe. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's, it's just how the human ego can be so large. And I could not get on my knees. I would not get on my knees and pray to anything. But God has his own plans. And I, I've loved the term, hound of heaven. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's when God pursues his own. And he'll pursue you if he wants you. And the only, pay, the only motivator he has for you to get to look heavenly and get on your knees is pain. Unfortunately, that's his only way of getting your attention. And he took away everything that I thought I valued. Everything. And after seven or eight years on that journey, and I read a lot of books. I read all the self-help books I could get. I was... Uh, you know, reading Ayn Rand and, and, and trying, to, trying to get a hang on to something to make me a better human being. I really was. I was trying as hard as I could. I went to therapy, talked to people about my anger, my rage, my, all this stuff, and it just it wasn't working. I went through my whole life trying to feel like I belonged on this planet somewhere, and it just wasn't working. And God puts people in your lives. And trust me, if you're on a journey, pay attention to the people you come. Even the guy that hits you with his car is maybe there for a reason, you know? <laughs> And I met some interesting people when I look back on this. God put a man in my life. He was doing comedy for 100 bucks a week. The guy was worth, I don't know, four, five, six million dollars. Sold his business, made millions of dollars. Just wanted to go on the road and do comedy. He was 50-some years old. Wasn't a very good comic. <laughs> but he didn't have to be. I mean, he had all the money he ever needed. He's the only guy that we ever worked with that pulled into the jobs with a 450 SEL Mercedes. <laughs> I'm coming in on the Greyhound, you know. <laughs> yeah, how are you? I'm your headliner for the week. I make the big money. How are you? But God knows his own, man, and he knew I wouldn't talk to this man. I, I was a shallow, vacuous, empty vessel. I really was. And I didn't have anything to talk to this man about until I found out because of his wealth, he had access to some of the nicest golf courses in America. He was actually a member of Mirfield Village here, and uh, that's all I needed to hear. He was my new best friend. <laughs> What I didn't know about him was he was a fundamentalist Christian, and I didn't know that. And we're sitting on the fairway one day just talking. And we're talking about life, we're talking about this, we're talking about that. And then he brings up the Bible. And I said, ah, don't give me the Bible, I don't want to hear the Bible. And he says, what do you mean? And I said, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in that garbage. And he says, well, what is it about the Bible you don't think is true? And I said, I don't know, I never read it. And he said, well, you're not an atheist, you're a moron. <laughs> And I have to tell you, I would have hit him, except that I would have lost access to Muirfield Village. And I wasn't, I wasn't going to do that. And I asked him to explain himself. And he said, well, to be honest with you, a true atheist is not only a biblical scholar, but is scholarly in all the face of the earth. And after a long intellectual journey, has come to the conclusion that there is no God of the universe. You, on the other hand, want to circumvent the entire intellectual process and just come to the conclusion that there's no God. That's lazy and moronic. I didn't know what to say. <laughs>